Hello and welcome to Lesson 11. We'll be covering chapters 20.6 and 20.7 in the text. Uh, this is Three Phase Power and this is Dr. Ken with you for this lesson again. So the contents of this lesson, we're going to look at 20.6, Three Phase Power, slides 1 through 16, and then 20.7, how we go about different ways of measuring three-phase power, slides 17 to 28. So part 1 will be uh, 20.6 and part 2, 20.7. So three-phase power, in a single-phase circuit, if you remember back to single-phase, true power is found with the equation power equals the voltage times the current multiplied by the power factor or the cos of the angle. So, and that's the cos of the angle between the voltage and the current. So, if you remember, our formula was P equals VI volts current multiplied by cos theta. In a three-phase circuit, the load can be balanced or unbalanced. So we're going to have to account for this. There are various ways to find the total power taken by a three-phase load. So let's look at the first one, a balanced load. And here we have a balanced star load and a balanced delta load. So here, Z, A, B and C, the impedances that make up the star configuration and the impedances that make up the delta configuration are all equal. So delta connected load has a line voltage across each of the phases. A star connected load has line current through each of the phases. So the thing that is common on a star load is the currents are common. On a delta load, it's the voltages that are common. It's important to remember that because we're going to use different power approaches or different ways to calculate power by understanding that over here on star current is consistent over here on delta it's voltage that is consistent so a balanced load power equation here it is the general equation to find true power consumed by a balanced star or delta load so this is the big equation the one that you'll probably use a lot of the time is this one. So the power is equal to the square root. So there's the uh, taking care of the 30 degrees angle. If you remember, there's 30 degrees always between current and voltage multiplied by the cos of the angle. So Basically, we have the same equation as we did for single phase power. If you can see it there, I'll put a red box around it. And all we've done is we've added multiply by the square root of 3 for three phase power. So, the general equation for three phase power, true power is in watts. So, that's our true power is in watts. The line voltage, so you'll notice it was V line we've used, so it's the line voltage and the line current. And of course, whatever the power factor happens to be caused by a reactive load. So the power factor is going to be a number between 1 and 0. If the power factor is 1, we know it's a purely resistive load. If the power is less than 1, so the power factor is less than 1, then we know we have a reactive load. So, let's do a little example. If we have a three-phase load that draws 20 amps 
at a lagging power factor of 0.8, 400 volts three phase supply, calculate the total power consumed. So they've told us we've got 400 volts line, we've got 20 amps line. In this particular case, they haven't told us whether it's star or delta connected, but it doesn't matter. And we have a power factor of 0.8. We simply use our equation, power equals the square root of volts, li volts line, current line times a power factor. So we're going to have our root 3 at 1.732 multiplied by 400 multiplied by 20 multiplied by the power factor. And in this case, the kilowatts. In other words, the true power is 11.04, or we're going to round it out to 11.1 kilowatts. So this calculates true power. True power. Because we're measuring it in watts. Remembering that watts is true power. But what happens when things become unbalanced? So each phase of an unbalanced load could have a different current and or power factor and our previous equation is not going to help us. The total power taken by the load is the sum of the power in each branch. So if we can work out what the branch powers are, we can then just add them together. So that's what they're saying here in this equation. The total power is just the addition of the branch power for A, the branch power for B, and the branch power for C. By the way, that will also work for a balanced load, but it's faster to use the previous equation. So the power taken by each phase is the product of the phase voltage, the phase current, and the power factor. So this time, our power in a particular phase, you'll notice the abbreviation uses a small p here, is the voltage across the phase, the current through the phase, multiplied by the power factor in the phase. So you've got to be careful when using this one to make sure that you have the appropriate voltage, the appropriate current, and the appropriate phase angle. So we can do that formula three times for A phase and we can then do it for B phase and then do it for C phase. We can add them all up as we did up the top once we have all three and get our power total. But we have to do it three times, A, B, and C, add them together, and then get our total power. So nothing like working through an example to make sure we understand what's happening. So here we're going to calculate the total true power, and you'll notice they've now started to use the term true power because we actually want the true power taken by the circuit. Here's our circuit on the right hand side. We have a star connected load and we have 12 amps at 0.8 lag. We have 6 amps on the A at, at unity. It's in phase, it's resistive. And we have 8 amps at 0.9 lag for C phase. We're told that our line voltage is 400 volts, 50 hertz. So let's summarize the values we have. We know V line equals 400 volts. We know our current is 6 amps at a power factor of 1. 
8 amps at a power factor of 0.9 and IC 12 amps at a power factor of 0.8 so the power taken by one phase and so little p is the volts in the phase the current in the phase and the power factor in the phase so that's our first equation second equation we need to find the volts phase because they've given us the volts line so down here is our volts line being a star connected system we don't have the volts phase so if you remember our volts phase for star connected volts phase is equal to the volts line divided by the square root of 3. So on this next equation we're simply converting our line voltage at 400 volts we're dividing it by root 3 to tell us that we actually have a phase voltage of 230 volts. So we've got 230 volts across each of these phases. 230 volts across each one. That's our phase voltage. So, total power is simply power A plus power B plus power C. So, let's work out the power in A first. 230 volts, because that's the phase voltage, multiplied by 6 amps, multiplied by 1 because it's got a power factor of 1, we have 1380 watts. For B, 230 again, 8 amps, power factor of 0 0.9, and we get 1656 watts. And finally for C, 230 volts again, 12 amps multiplied by 0.8 gives us 2,208 watts. We simply add up our three values and the answer is 5,244 watts. Or well, we can round that to 5.2 kilowatts. So this is just a summary of what we've just done. Here's our 12 amps, our 6. We worked out each of the three powers. We simply added the three powers together and that gave us the power total power total was this and of course this is, as we already know, true power. True power. But what about the apparent and the reactive power? So Apparent power and reactive power. So we have again some general equations to find reactive power. Remember reactive power we use the letter Q to represent it. And apparent power we use the letter S to represent it. And again this time in a balanced star or delta connected load. So Q is square root of volts line, current line, multiplied this time by the sine of the angle. So it's the same as getting Q in single phase, except we've now added, of course, our 
multiply by the square root of 3. And why? Why, why? Because there is a standard 30 degree shift between line current and phase current or line voltage and phase voltage in a three phase star or delta connected system simply by the fact of the way the machine is being wired or the relationship of the windings in the machine when I say wired that's what I mean S again standard formula for S volts VA but we again also multiply by square root of 3 to allow for three phase so our formulas for both single phase and three phase are very very similar basically all we're doing is we're simply adding multiply by square root of three to give us the three phase version of the equation so Q is the total reactive power and again the units are in VAR volts amps reactive apparent power is still in volts amps just in VA and remember we're using the line voltages and the line currents and the phase angle in this particular case we're using the sine of the phase angle for Q. Remember sometimes you might be given the phase angle as a power factor you'll have to convert the power factor back to an angle and then get the sign of the angle so a little trick to remember there. So that's another revision of our problem Again, it's the same equation as 20.8. We've already worked our way through it, so I won't take you through it again. But I'll leave it on the screen for a few seconds just so uh, you can re-establish in your head what we've just done. So here's another example. Example 20.8. In this particular example, we've got a delta connected load and it's really obvious because it's got the shape of a delta we're told uh, that the uh, current in C is 50 amps at minus 30 degrees we know it's balanced so if it's balanced you can see here if it's balanced then it's going to have the same amount of current in each one. We can still use our power equations and Pythagoras' theorem. So in this particular case, we're going to be able to use the information to work out the apparent power. We're given the phase angle, and then we'll be able to work out all the others. And you can see here, they've already done the calc, but we're going to work through the calc so again the s let's just revise our pythagoras equations the apparent power s is simply p squared plus q squared and take the square root of it so we're just taking that if you have, want to find out the q and you have the s and the p so it'll be s squared minus p squared and take the square root of that and if you want to find out the P, the true power, it's simply the S squared minus the Q squared and take the square root of all of that. Again, this is just a reminder of uh, power factor for a balanced load. Power factor is the true power divided by the apparent power it's the same as our single phase equation. We're just playing with bigger numbers with three phase, that's all. So power factor does not apply to an unbalanced load as each phase has a different power factor. So the trick here is to remember 
this is only going to work for a balanced load. If it's an unbalanced load, it's not going to work because there's going to be a different power factor in each leg of the circuit. So let's do a worked example. And uh, that'll help us uh, embed what we've just learnt. So here we now have a, a delta connected load. Takes 100 kilowatts of true power. So straight away we know what the true power is. And it's operating. Here's something a little bit different for you. A 3.3 K volt. So 33.3 thousand volts. We want to know what the power factor of the motor is, the phase angle of the motor, and we want to work out the reactive power. So we summarize the values that we've been told. We have the volts line, we have the current line, and we have the power line. So to calculate the power factor, first we've got to find the apparent power. So before we can go too much further, we've got to find the apparent power. And if you remember, we can find S with volts multiplied by amps, but we've got to multiply by our root 3, remember, to allow for 3 phase. So 1.732 multiplied by 3,300, remember we've got 3,300 volts, and we've got 22 amps. We do the maths, and we end up with 125.7 kVA. So it's still VA, but it's just thousands of VA, so 125.7 kVA. So now we have the power, the true power, we have the apparent power, and we know that the power factor is P divided by S, so we have our 100 kilowatts divided by 125 kilowatts, and we end up with a power factor of 0.795, and we'll just simply, that's so close to 0.8, we tend to round it up to 0.8. The next thing we needed to find was the phase angle. Of course, once we have the power factor, we know that the angle is equal cos to the minus 1 multiplied by the power factor. So cos to the minus 1.795 gives us an angle of 37.3 degrees. And then finally, calculating the Q, the last Part, the reactive power. We know that uh, we have the line volts and the line current, but this time instead of multiplying by the sine of the angle, we're going to multiply, sorry, by, uh, by the cos of the angle, we're going to multiply by the sine of the angle. So 1.73 for root 3, the voltage at 330, but sorry, 3300 volts, 22 amps and the sine of 37 degrees that gives us 76.1989 kvar so we end up with quite a large kvar component so that's how we calculate the three powers of true power apparent power and reactive power around a three-phase, in this particular case, balanced circuit. So let's sum up what we've learnt so far. So the main things we've learnt are the three equations for power calculations. So power taken by one phase is this one, obviously, and you can calculate the power taken by 
one phase if you have all the parameters for a single phase. So you will need the voltage inside the phase, you'll need the current inside the particular phase, and you will need the angle inside a particular phase. As long as you've got those three items, you can work out the power within the phase. Power taken by a balanced three phase load. Nice standard equation. And again, I would suggest you take the time to pause the video, make sure you can find this equation on your equation sheet because you're going to use it a lot. The power equals the square root of three multiplied by the line voltage, multiplied by the line current, multiplied by the cos of the angle, that being the angle relationship between voltage and current. And power taken in an unbalanced three phase load is reasonably straightforward. You've got to calculate the power in A phase, then the power in B phase, then the power in v, C phase, then add the three of them together to get the total power. So if it's all balanced, you can use the center equation. That's this one. If you've just got to find the power in a single phase, it's this one. But if you've got an unbalanced situation, you've got to find individual phases, then it's this one. Find the individual powers in the phases and then add them together. Equations for finding your um, reactive and apparent powers. Again, the equation for reactive power is this one, Q equals the square root of three volts line, current line multiplied by the sine of the angle, but it's still in V A volts amps reactive. And apparent power is the same as our normal apparent power equation, except this time we've introduced our root three as we have in all these equations, allowing for the standard amount of angle created by the way the three phase alternators are wound and constructed. And of course the units for that are simply volt amps. So that ends our uh, lesson 11 part 1. The next part continues on the next video.